You know, today we're going to continue talking about I'm the one that's going to reach the one. And there's someone out there that's waiting for you. Just like Marissa needed someone to help her through her loneliness, her mom going back out there and doing her thing, leaving her with Fs, leaving her with nothing. Someone had to come in and say, Marissa, we love you, and I'll take you into my life. See, reaching someone is not just a superficial relationship. Reaching someone means that you're going to bring these, this person into your circle and put in some work. God's not going to send you perfectly, perfectly mature, likable, nice, people. He's going to send you someone that's hurting, that's broken, that's lonely, and might even be a little difficult to deal with. But this is what God does. He specializes in dealing with difficult people. And we know that because the 12 disciples that he picked were all difficult people. All of them doubted him. All of them had issues and emotions. We see Peter, he started cussing after three years of training. <laughs> Thomas sees Jesus resurrected from the dead and he says, I still don't believe you. Can I touch, <laughs> can I put my fingers in your, in your nails, or the holes in your hands? That's crazy. Like Jesus says, come on now, right? But he dealt with difficult people and he still deals with difficult people, and he calls us to difficult people. So today we're going to continue reading a story, and we're going to be on this story for some weeks. We've been on this story for like three weeks, but we're going to continue hitting this story. And this is an Old Testament story, and it's a story about a man named Gideon. We're not going to go deep into Gideon today, but I'm going to set the stage of how God's going to use a man named Gideon that never thought he could be used of God. He thought he was a nobody, and God used him to rescue some difficult people. So who was he called to rescue? He was called to rescue some sinners like you and I. Let's look at the scripture in Ju Judges chapter 6, verse 1. It says the Israelites, a group of people called the Israelites, did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. So who were they reaching? I'm going to re review a little bit from last week. They're reaching out to some people that have done evil in the Lord's sight. And all it means is that they did life their way, not God's way. And the evil that they did in God's sight was this. So what they do that was so evil, this is what they did. God was the one that would help them fight the battles of life. And back in those days, if they wanted to take over territory or they wanted to go into war, they would ask God, God, should we go into war and will you back us up? Well, God was giving them victory over all of their enemies. So they go from battle to battle, win, win, win. And they would go into cities that were built already. They were able to take advantage of vineyards that were planted already. So they were getting treasure and victory and prosperity. And this all came from a place of slavery. They were slaves before all of this. For 400 years, God set them free. And then he put them on a track of a success increase. And all he wanted was this. When you're, when you're in the abundance and you're in the victory and you're in the blessing and things are going good, please don't forget about me. And be careful that when you're blessed, you don't start worshiping the blessings or start worshiping the gods, the false gods of the land that I'm delivering to you. So there would be a pattern that God would bless them and then they would go from there and do evil, and it would start worshiping the gods of the territory 
that God delivered them to. So, so this is what would happen is they would mo most of the men, this is what would happen, they'd fall with the women. So they'd see the women that were beautiful and the men would start chasing after them, being with them, and then the women, the Midianite women, would begin to introduce them to their gods. So they would start worshiping God and worshiping lust. Worshiping God and worshiping the false gods that would bring rain or bring prosperity or bring a harvest. And they stopped trusting in God. How many know this? You can't serve two gods. So we're in the same place today that there's a lot of temptation out there and the majority of the temptation out there is tied to our passions or tied to our lusts which start developing deep desires and we start trading in God or holy living for a compromised lustful life like everyone else. And we're starting to see because of that, Christians nowadays aren't as effective because they're not walking in great power because they're too much like the world that God delivered them from. So God doesn't deliver you from to go back into. He delivers you from so you can help some people also get delivered. You guys understand this? So we're seeing a pattern here. So now these people are in the backstage of this. They're now doing evil. They're worshiping the gods of the Midianites. So what God does, he gives them over to their choice. So I'm reviewing here. Who, is, who are we reaching? Who is God reaching? He's reaching sinners. Who is he reaching? Now I want you to get this. He's reaching people just like us. See, we, none of us start off as a child of God. We all start off as sinners. Then we give our life to Jesus and then we become children of God. I'm saying this because these people did evil in the Lord's sight and he saw it. We've done evil in the Lord's sight and he's seen it too. But God's not intimidated by your sin. He's not here to judge your sin. He's here to save you. He's here to rescue you. He's here to set you free. And he wants to love you. Now, if that's the message that God wants to save the sinner, not judge the sinner, we got to be also careful that after you get saved and you become a child of God, that you don't become judgmental and forget where you came from. Because we are not on a judging mission, we are on a saving mission. And what I mean by that is you can't be judging people and want to save them at the same time. The word judgment means that you want to punish them. Don't be a religious hypocrite and want to punish people for the very things you have done. You guys understand that? So if we're going to reach them, we have to make sure we have a merciful attitude, a forgiven attitude. Understand you're only reaching out to people that have been in the same place you have been. Right? So uh, there's a scripture I want to read here. It says, Romans 3.23, it says, for everyone has sinned. Who sinned? We all fall short of God's glorious standard. That's all. We've all sinned. Who sinned? Everyone. Now, is everyone here a sinner? Now, not everyone's a sinner. A sinner is someone that hasn't been saved by placing their faith in Jesus Christ yet. Now, do Christians sin? Yes, but we're not sinners. We are now children of God. We have a new identity. Sam say a new identity. We are saved. We are children of God. Who, what, who's a sinner? Those that don't know Jesus as their Savior yet. And also those that live a life of practicing sin. I might sin, but I'm not practicing sin. Every day I want to become more and more like God. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. You guys understand? I used to do life my way. Now I do it God's way. But now that I'm living for God, I must not forget where I came from. So we're reaching out to sinners. God's reaching out to sinners. 
He does it through people. When God wants to reach people, he uses people to reach people. That's how he does it. The second thing that we see, who are we reaching? We're reaching out to people that are suffering under the consequences of their bad choices. See, see, we all have the power of choice. And good choices, I'm going to make this very simple, lead to good results. Bad choices lead to bad results, or I would even say this, consequences. You got to be careful that you're not blaming God for the mess you have in your life based on the decisions that you've made. Because we got a lot of God blaming, and God's not your problem. God is your answer. God is your healer. Most of the problems that we deal with in life are self-created by bad choices. So let's look at choice for a second. And I want this is all review, but let's look at, at Deuteronomy 30, 19. And it says, today I am giving you a choice of two ways. I'm going to give you some insights here. I'm going to give you three insights out of this scripture. But let's read the whole scripture. And I ask heaven and earth to be a witness of your choice. The word choice, I give you a choice. I'll be a witness of your choice. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring a blessing. You can choose life. If you choose life, it will bring a blessing. So this choice my, it's not saying it might work out well for you. If you make this choice, it will lead to a guaranteed blessing. Say it with me. Guaranteed blessing. You choose life. Choose the first choice. It's guaranteed to lead to a blessing. But look at this. The other choice, so there is another choice, will bring a curse. So the second, second choice will lead to a what? Not a maybe curse, a guaranteed curse. A guaranteed curse. And the reason I'm saying that is because could it be that your life is under a curse right now, guaranteed because of the bad choice you made? What I love about this scripture is if a bad choice puts you underneath a curse, a good choice can put you underneath a blessing. It can be reversed. The curse can be reversed. Say it with me. The curse can be reversed. And that's what we're talking about. It doesn't matter what curse that people are under. We're bringing good news. The curse can be reversed. But could it be that you're under a curse and not know you're under a curse? Or you're under a curse and you're blaming God for being under a curse and God didn't put you under a curse, you put yourself under the curse. Because you chose a curse. <laughs> you chose, you made the bad choice. See, you'll never ever get right until you realize where you got off track. You'll never ever be restored until you take personal responsibility for your life choices. Right? So God's given us a whole Bible to help us with life choices. So he gives us two ways. So inside number one, there's two, there's two choices. Inside number one, the only two choices. And what's the two choices? I'll make it simple. Our way versus God's way. What's the two choices? Our way versus what? I'm going to do it my way. He goes, you can do it your way. But if you do it your way and you reject my way, your way is going to lead to a curse. Your way is going to lead to death. If you do it my way, it will lead to a blessing. It will lead to life. Choose. This is why the church should be packed. Because this lifestyle of God leads to life and it leads to blessing. A life apart from God is guaranteed to lead to death and a curse. So he says, now, insight number two, only two outcomes. Life and blessing or death and curses. Let me look at this word life. He goes, 
He says, choose, if you can choose life. You can choose. <laughs> you don't have to be a victim anymore. You can choose life. You can now make a different choice. You are free to choose a different choice. You are free to choose a different outcome. You don't have to guess in life anymore and make yourself a victim. It seems like it never works out. It will never work out if you keep making the same choices. You guys get that? If you keep choosing the same type of boyfriend, you're going to keep getting the same results. Well, maybe this boyfriend's different. No, he's the same. That's the same guy, different clothes. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone like that? They jump, they jump out of this way. I can't stand him. He abusive. And then they pick up, they go to another city and they pick up the same guy. Different clothes. Same bad habits. Same drug addiction. Same abusive behavior. And then we wonder, why is it not working out? You keep making the same choice. It's getting quiet up in here. Praise the Lord. That's all right. We're learning. You know what that means? We're learning. Someone say life. You can choose life. You know, you know what's so cool about this? Jesus said this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What he's saying for you today in 2021, life, you can choose Jesus. Or you can choose not to have Jesus. I'm not offering you religion, and we're not going out there offering anybody a religion. We're offering them a life, the life of God, Jesus Christ, eternal life, a new beginning, freedom, the life that you could only find in God. It's good. You can choose life. You know what that word life means? Fruitfulness, joy. Increase, refreshment, revival, renewal, strength, community, company, congregation, relationships. Does anybody want that list? You can choose it. That's like, you can't get mad if you, you go to, um, you go to a, a restaurant and you don't, like, you don't like what you ordered last time and you order it, the same thing again. <laughs> like the other day, we, um, um, Gabriel bought a Brianna some uh, carne asada burrito, right? And he bought himself a different one. So Abriana takes a bite of her carne asada burrito and she goes, oh my God, this is so salty. And I'm like, stop it, Abriana, stop complaining. Your, your husband got you a burrito. Be thankful, be grateful. <laughs> so poor Abriana, my daughter, just is, is eating this, this burrito. So, and then I, I, I go, I, and, then, and then she's eating it, and then I take a bite. I go, can I have a bite? And it was the worst burrito I ever ate. It looked like they made it with pure salt and no meat. It was just, ah! <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with ordering a bad burrito once, but there is a problem when you go back over there and you have a whole menu and you order the same thing again. And then you're complaining, why is this burrito so salty? That's the way they make them over there. <laughs> why is my wife, my life so salty? That's the choice you keep making. <laughs> Little salty choices. <laughs> so you can choose life or you can choose blessing. Or you can choose blessing too, prosperity, peace. Um, in, an invocation of, God, of good over our lives by God. Uh, it, it, this invocation makes us extremely fortunate and happy. That's good. Or you could choose death. That means ruin, destruction, misfortune, misery, 
pestilence, death by violence, hell. Whoa! Pastor, you didn't have to go so deep all the way to hell. But understand this, if you go to hell, you chose to go there. No one's going to hell without choosing hell as an option. Because your choices are leading somewhere. If you choose Jesus, you choose eternal life. If you choose Jesus, you choose forgiveness. If you choose Jesus, you choose heaven. You choose to not believe. Do it your way. God's already letting you know your choice will produce an outcome. And this choice will produce death and eventually pestilence, pain, suffering, and eventually hell. What? We're crazy. Like, you can't say, I'm going to choose drugs and not choose addiction. No, 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 pastor. Pastor, I want drugs with no addiction, please. <laughs> what do you think this is, like Burger King? I want a hamburger, no tomatoes. I want addiction with no, I mean, no, drugs with no addiction, please. Light on the addiction. <laughs> right. They come together, homie. They come together. I want to marry a non-believer. I'm a Christian. I want to marry a non-believer, but I want to have peace in my relationship. What? You guys are going two different directions from the beginning. And then you're all mad because he doesn't want you to go to church. And he tells you, you already knew that I didn't want to go to church and I didn't want you to go to church. Why are you acting like you didn't know? Well, I thought I could change you. Yeah, right. You know what the problem is? Is this, that we think we can make bad choices and choose our outcome. You can't make bad choices and choose your outcome. The choice comes with an outcome. Period. The choice comes with a what? You will be blessed. You will have life. You will be cursed. It will lead to death. These aren't maybes. These are absolutes. I already know where your life is headed by the life choices you're making right now. Is that right? It'll lead to death. It means ruin, destruction, misfortune, misery, pestilence, death by violence, hell, curses, ill-fated. This is what he said. If you choose to do it your way, it will lead to unhappiness, an un un unfortunate end. It's going to bring bad fortune your way. It's going to degrade you, deprave you. You're going to become immoral, miserable, and perverted. What? Because what you give yourself to, you become more of. You're not born a pervert. <laughs> Sounds funny, huh? So, so that's good to know, man. I thought I was born this way. <laughs> You're not born a <laughs> boy. You're not born a pervert. Try to say that four times. You become one. You're not born a liar. You become one. And what you give yourself to, you become. See, you cannot give yourself to something without becoming a slave to it. And the problem, once you start giving yourself to a perverted lifestyle, any kind of lifestyle of sin, it begins to take over your identity. And unless you're willing to repent of your sins, you're now mastered by your sins. Your identity is now your sin. And now you want people to accept your sin. 
What a shame that you're now taking on identity of a addict when God has called you to be free. But you begin to give yourself to something and now you become that. And now we're so stuck with our sexual identities nowadays. We give ourselves to no, so many, so many sexual escapades, trying everything. We, I mean, we got people who are trisexuals. You just try anything. <laughs> what category? I'm trisexual. <laughs> and I got rights. No, is that you give yourself to trying all types of different sex and there's a problem. You become what you give yourself to. Because every sin comes with chains. Every sin becomes, comes with what? You give yourself to anger and anger and anger. You become an angry person. But you were not born to be an angry person. You became an angry person. You chose not to forgive. You hold on to a grudge. And you keep holding on grudges. And now you're known as angry. Where'd that come from? Life choices. But the good news is that if you've gone into bondage because of a life choice and become an addict, the truth is, if you've been overwhelmed by an emotion and you've been become afflicted by the decisions you made and now you can't sleep at night and now you're tormented by the decisions you make, you're full of depression, you're full of anxiety. Or maybe your life choices have left to decrease after decrease after decrease. Nothing's growing. You can't seem to get out of your way. You're empty. You're losing. It's lack. All because of choices. There's choices that lead to prosperity. There's choices that lead to increase. There's choices that lead to blessing. There's choices that lead to restoration. There's choices that lead to healing. There's choices that lead to breakthrough. And then there's choices that lead to destruction. There's choices that lead to bondage. There's choices that lead to pain. There's choices that lead to torment. There's choices that lead to deep depression. There's choices that lead to fear. You choose. If you do it your way, you will get your consequences. So we see it. Curses, depraved, become immoral, miserable, perverted. We got to be careful of this. That we're not justifying our bad behavior. You know, there's so many people that call themselves Christians, but don't believe the Bible <laughs> is perfect. You can't be a Christian and not believe that the Word of God, you can't believe that, you got to believe it's incorruptible. You can't be a Christian and justify your life and say something like this, well, the Bible was written by men, so it must have, it must have mistakes in it. And the reason you say that is because you don't want to be accountable to it. You want to do it your way. Well, it has mistakes. Where? Which, which one? Where? Find one. Because I talk to people all day long to say that kind of stuff. And most of them don't know there's any. They just say that. And the reason they say that is they want to do it their way. But you know what you call that? Justifying your bad choices. But you could justify it. You could excuse it. But you can't choose the outcome. Because the outcome has already been chosen. Singles, lay a foundation so when you get married, you have some God in your relationship. You want to make all your relationship about lust? And then you want to have this awesome marriage? How can you have an awesome marriage building your foundation on lust? That every time you guys are coming together, you're sleeping with each other, feeling up on each other, but yet we want to have this great relationship with God when we get married. It's based, 
Your relationship is based on lust, on passion. Your foundation is lust. So when you get married, it's still going to be lust. And you're going you're gonna to go from a fornicator to an adulterer. Well, it's getting quiet up in here now. I want to help somebody. If you want to have a marriage like me and Lisa have, you're going to have to lay some foundation down. And even if you messed it up, good news, you can start getting it right. See, getting it right, it might be hard because you have to deny yourself and deny your lust so you can start saying yes to God. But you can't be saying yes to you and saying yes to God. Make up your mind. Who are you going to serve? <laughs> we'll end it right here because you, this is just crazy. It's just crazy up in here. Are we learning though? Come on, we're learning. We're learning. Someone's like, oh, you mean it was my fault? Oh, I thought my mom fault. <laughs> See, because you'll never get right blaming everybody. I'm not saying your mama was the same and she did everything right and your dad was right. They might have all been jacked up. But you, could, you still got to make some choices. You got to take all that jacked up beginning and turn it around with Jesus Christ and call on him and God fix this mess in my life. And we're going to end it with this. I'm going to give you one more insight, but I'm going to, I'm going to read this scripture here. See, Proverbs 14, 12. Look what it says. You can rationalize it all you want and justify the path of error you have chosen. You can't rewrite the Bible to fit your lifestyle. You could justify it all you want and justify the path of error you have, been, you have chosen. But you'll find out. Say with me, you'll find out. Everybody will find out. Sooner or later, you will find out. In the end, that you took the road to destruction. You could justify, but understand this. You'll find out in the end, the road that you chose led to destruction of your life, of your, pers of your purpose, of your emotions, of your family, of your future, of your relationship with God. Of, it, it just destroyed everything in the end. You could justify it. But at the end, you will find out that the path that you chose led to destruction. Yes. And I'm going to give you one last insight. Insight number two, insight number one was only two choices, our way or God's way. Insight number two, only two outcomes, life and, life and blessing or death and curses. Insight number three, our choices won't just affect our lives, but our children's lives. So you can't just make a choice independent of your family bloodline. Your choices are going to affect your family bloodline. Whether they know it or not. What I mean by that is you could be good at hiding your bad choices. But understand, it's going to flow into your bloodline. How do I know this? Well, how I know this is that my, my father was a very jealous man. He was a womanizer and very violent. He'd beat my mom up, get in fights all the time. That was my dad. My dad in this life, when he would come home after a weekend of, of going out on my mother every single weekend with a different woman, every weekend. Every weekend, he'd go out there and get drunk. Every weekend. And every weekend, he'd come home, look underneath the bed for men. He was accusing my mother for doing the very things he was doing on the streets. He'd come home, go in the closets, looking all over, calling my mom all kinds of names, and punching her in the face. Where is he? Where is he? There was nobody. Every Monday, he would say the same exact thing. I'm sorry. He'll kneel down and cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. After he saw the damage that he did to my mother. See, the problem was he wasn't just affecting his life. 
he was affecting my life. And now when I finally got into a relationship with Lisa, ready to get married, I grew up in the church. I had a different upbringing than my father, but his choices affected me, his bloodline. And I saw myself little by little becoming more like my dad, even as a Christian. I'd get jealous. And that jealousy was turning into rage. And I remember going out with Lisa. I, would, I didn't hit her, but I was very close. I was hitting everything but her. I broke her windshield in her car, broke her, parents gave her a car. I was destroying the interior of her car. There was a day that I was, I was at her door with a, with a jealous rampage, asking her questions, and she was behind one of those those screen doors that are iron. And I go, open the door. She goes, I'm not opening the door when you're acting like that. And that got me more mad. And she goes, if you keep acting like that, I'm going to call the police. And that got me more mad. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you're going to call the police? I finally got to the place that I realized it was, I was saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh-oh, just like my dad. And I couldn't stop it. Because I'd even cry, I'm sorry. But and then the next week, questions, 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 more questions. The jealousy was taken over. What happened? My father passed on his curse. My father did not pass on a blessing. His choice became now my default. So don't think that what you're doing is not going to affect your kids. And what's so good about this, we can change the next generation by the choices we make right now. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've made. It's time to reverse the curse. And this is what the scripture says. It says in, in, in Deuteronomy, it says, the, uh, it says the first choice will bring a blessing. The other choice will bring a curse. So choose life. Then you and your children will live. You and what? You know what that word live means? That they will live prosperous, prosperous life. They will live forever. It will affect their eternity. They'll be restored to life and health from sickness and discouragement. And they will grow spiritually. Just because I made a choice. Now I got five girls at home, and now my girls are all saved. My girls are all going to heaven. My girls are all growing spiritually. Not perfect, but they're growing every single day. My girls are advancing now because of a choice that I made. I'm not a perfect father, a perfect person, but I did make a choice to do it God's way. And I did make a choice to choose life, which was Jesus Christ. And I did make a choice. Jesus helped me. And he set me free from the jealousy. And I remember that day. I go, God, set me free. And God says, you ask for help, I'll set you free. I got set free from jealousy in one minute. I was set free from it. And God says, just do this. I'm going to set you free. Stay free. And I go, well, how do I stay free? He goes, don't ask another jealous question again. If you're done, you're done. And I go, I'm done, God. He goes, well, we're, we're done. You're free. And today we've had, you know, marriage for 31 years. I've never had a jealous question or thing. Even if a thought came, I le I get, go on your own way. Because I'm not going to give myself into you and get into bondage again. What a shame that God would set you free and you go back into slavery. Amen. Have we learned something today? Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome. Whew. Praise the Lord. Now, what is all this about reaching someone? What is it all about? Say we're reaching someone. Who are reaching? We're reaching sinners. We're reaching people who have made some bad choices. And, and we want to let them know that they can reverse the curse by choosing Jesus. I'm going to dismiss in just one second. But before I dismiss, I want to give an opportunity for every single person in this place to choose life, to choose a new beginning, to choose restoration, to choose freedom. Some of you, some of us in this place, you're a believer, 
and God sets you free, but little by little, you've allowed yourself to be lured back into your lifestyle. And you're miserable now. And I know you're miserable. You know why? You're here. <laughs> if the sin was so good, you, you would not be here. You're starting to realize, man, what? I need to get back. I've lost my joy. I've lost my peace. I've lost my integrity. I've lost, I'm becoming more immoral. I, I thought I could keep control of this thing. And this thing now is controlling me. Like what? What happened? And you're called to be a leader. And you're called to be a man of God. And you're called to be a woman of God. And you're called to be a hero to the next generation. And you're called to be a pace setter. You're called. But choose. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. We're not here to be entertained. We're here to choose. You've been maybe living a, like a lukewarm life, like in, out, in, out, in, out. And you're like, how's it working for you? Because I know this, it's never worked for me. Because once God touched me and saved me, sin is not as pleasurable as it used to be. Because after it's done, I'm I have a deep hole in my heart. Like, God, I'm sorry. I don't want to live this way anymore. But the choice to finally break that spirit of, uh, or this mindset of backsliding is to finally just say, God, I need your help and I don't want to live this way anymore. Or maybe you're in this room today and you're saying, man, I've made some, I realized the choices that I made have led to these consequences. And your life can turn around today if you make a choice today to place your faith in Jesus. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved, will be made whole, they'll be restored. God's not here to judge you. He's here to make you whole. He's here to save you. He's here to give you eternal life. And no one is going to enter into heaven without choosing Jesus. Jesus said this, I am. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, it says, and he says this, no one will go to the Father, but through me. You can't get there without me. Say, why is that? Because see, we chose death. And you know what that meant? We chose a death sentence over our lives and we chose to do it our way. But God loved you so much that he sent his only son to pay the price for all the wrong we've done. Jesus died so you can live. Jesus took on all your depression so you could have some joy again. Jesus was, was, was arrested and put in prison so you could be free. He loves you. Jesus and his love is knocking at heart's door. Will you open up and receive him and accept him? Or you, will you reject him? Bow your heads, close your eyes for a second. I'm going to count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I'm not sure I'm right with God. I'm not sure if I died right now to go to heaven. I've been making some choices. I've been doing life my way, but I'm done. Today's my day of reconciliation. Today's my day of a new beginning. Today's my day to be set free. Today's my day to ask God for forgiveness. I need a new start. I need a new beginning. This curse must be lifted. It's a choice. Choose Jesus. Choose blessing. Choose life. Choose eternal life. Choose happiness. Choose joy. Choose peace. Choose Him. Or you can reject him. Then you choose death. Then you choose curses. It's as simple as that. Today's your day. You say, Pastor, if I were to die right now, I don't know if I go to heaven, but I want to, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to know before I leave this place, I'm going to heaven. Also, I'm a Christian, but I walked away. I'm like those Israelites. I want to come back home though. And God says, come son, come daughter, I love you. One. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus or I want to recommit my life to the Lord. One. Two, and I say three, quickly raise your hands all over this building. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand in the back. I see the hand in the back. I see the hand over there. Proud of you. I see the hand there. I see those hands there. I see the hand. Proud of you, honey. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand over there. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, see the hand right over there. Proud of you. See the hand over there. I want those. Proud of you. I want those to raise their hands. 
to give me, give me the honor and the privilege to pray with you. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up here. And this is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats. And not just saying it, but I'm taking action. I'm done with that life. I'm moving towards my new life. This is a choice. Let's give them a hand as they're coming up. Come on, someone's choosing Jesus. Choosing a new beginning. Choosing freedom. Choosing joy. Choosing restoration. Choosing a new beginning for them and their family. Proud of you. Come on, church. One more hand. Come on. Celebrate like heaven celebrates. today. Someone's going to get set free from depression today. Someone's going to get set free from, from an addiction today. Someone's going to get set free from torment today. Someone's going to get set free from a cycle. Someone's going to get set free from a curse. It's going to happen right now. Love you. Proud of you. This stuff, how many understand this stuff is real? The the Bible says that when you're making a choice, he calls heaven and earth as a witness. You know what that means? Is that the spiritual realm is looking right now. Demons are looking. Angels are looking. Heaven is looking. And because you made a choice today for Jesus, heaven is acting on your behalf. He says, let's go to war. Let's set them free. Let's bless them. Let's Let's direct them. Let's go. It was just like that when you chose sin. The Bible describes a man from Cain that had a choice presented before him. And God told him, Cain, be careful with the choice you make because sin or the devil is crouching at the door ready to take over. The spiritual realm is ready to see what decision you make. But today you've made a decision. The spiritual realm is responding. God's spirit is going to come into your life today. You're going to be forgiven of every sin. The curse is going to be lifted off your life and you're going to live for God, okay? You're going to do it. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of us. Like, God loves you guys. Come on. So God loves you. We love you. It don't matter where you start. It don't matter. It's how you finish this race. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And we're going to pray because the Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead and you confess Jesus as your Lord, you'll be saved. Today's your day of salvation. Today's your day of recommitment to Christ. Today's the day to be set free from the curse and death and the generational garbage that was passed on to you. And you're going to clean it out for the next generation. The devil's not only losing you, he's losing your kids, he's losing your grandchildren, he's losing your future children, he's losing all of them because of your choice. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for not giving up on me and not judging me, but loving me and showing me mercy. Today, I ask you to forgive me for doing life my way it hasn't worked set me free from all bad habits addictions and torment and unhealthy emotions and relationships make me new from this day forward I make a choice to follow you Jesus for the rest of my life I am saved I'm a child of God. I am blessed. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand.